welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business. We hope your day was full of joy. Coming to the mic, we have Angela Marshall, who is a motivational presenter, bestseller author, creative content consultant, ex-NFL wife and business owner of, in other words, By Stone. Also known as Author Stone, she is a positive words powerhouse that utilizes her personal life experiences of struggle, strength, and success to captivate audiences and readers abroad. Angela is also a community advocate, youth mentor, and supporter. So welcome, welcome, Angela. Welcome to this wow. my business. <laughs> thank you, thank you guys for having me. I'm so humbled. That was a mouthful, huh? It's, it's yeah. like- <laughs> <laughs> we can't wait to hear how you arrived. <laughs> inspiring minds want to know (laughs) absolutely so tell us yes indeed how all of this had became absolutely i have been on a journey just to impact and influence positively through my words work and wisdom let me start by saying that i arrived at the place and the space that i'm in simply because my life journey took a spin, I guess, if you would, or took a path that other people had not been on. And it was quite, um, it it arose their uh, curiosity, should I say. So I've been asked the question so many times as far as like, what was that lifestyle like? Oh, I bet the lifestyle was like this or that, being a former National Football League wife. And it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be, not because of the NFL or because of my ex-husband at the time. That wasn't it. It was me. Because as we all know, when you don't do that inner work, it is a life destined for misery. (laughs) So I really had to, uh, once I I penned the book, the autobiography, which is the story and life of an ex-NFL wife, I started doing the work to make me a better me you know, just to define who I was so others could stop confining me. (laughs) And also, I was in a space at that particular time where I was working for corporate. It wasn't necessarily fulfilled. I was pretty much just doing what I had to do to keep the bills paid and all of that good stuff after my divorce from that, uh, that particular player. And I, you know, had to do what I needed to do for my two children. And one of the things that I loved doing was writing, journaling, reading, Uh, you know, so it was inevitable that I pin my book and then also create my business, which is in other words, by stone, where I help people write resumes, bios, essays. I do grant writing proposals, bids, also ghost writing. I have several clients now that I'm helping them write their books. And I decided that I would leave corporate after 16 years and just branch out so that I could have a more fulfilling life for myself and for my my two children at the time. Excellent. Congratulations for Mm -hmm. branching out because so many people want to be there. They're either afraid or not, or just not ready yet. Correct. So congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. For sure. So you do a lot of things. Yes. Lady with many hats. <laughs> I know that's right. So the writing is definitely um, grant writing. Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. Because there's a lot of nonprofits out there that definitely need that service. Mm-hmm. So how does that work to get with you to get a grant done? Well, pretty much, uh, you know, you have to do the consult. So that will be first. They will get in touch with me either through my website, by email, and also my phone number, uh, you know, my business uh, number is available to all. So we would talk about the needs for the particular project that they need the grant for. I would have to do research review because you always have to do that because I always, t- I try to tell people no two grants and no two proposals are alike. 
there's always certain caveats or certain things within the grants, the bids or the proposals that you really have to pay attention to because you want to make sure that you're writing it to the best of your ability so that anytime there's any type of audit, you're on top of it. <laughs> you know, I don't mm -hmm. like to have a, you know, half or, or half, uh, do half research or half review. When it comes to things um, dealing with the government with grants for certain funding for projects, you want to be on your P's and Q's, definitely. So basically, we would start that process. It would be a consult trying to figure out, you know, if one, if we would be a really a good fit, because, you know, I don't write grants for, I'm not a broad grant writer, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I'm more so um, uh, for children's projects and for private sector projects like landscaping, beautifying the city. I've done, uh, you know, quite a few grants and, and, yeah, grants and proposals and bids for that. So we just make sure that it's a, a good fit. And if not, I have a long list of people that I can turn other people on to. And I very much am a connector. It's not about competition for me. If I can't do what's needed for you, I will pass you along to somebody else who can, that will happily help you to get to where you're trying to be. So that's how the process actually starts. We meet, you know, a couple of times, figure out what, you know, what, um, grant we need to, the grants that we, that we qualify for, what we need to apply for and then take it from there. Awesome, that's yeah. awesome. Wow. You gotta have it right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that know what much I do know. Grants are tricky that way. They have to be exact. Yes. How, what do you suggest to somebody who's looking for grants? Uh, you know, there are a lot of loss leader yes. advertisements out there. And so people are looking for grants. You know, they may want to start a business, whatever. And you get, can get caught up paying for a lot of nonsense. Yes. Now they have you, because you're going to give us your information. So <laughs> all that's over, folks. You have a resource now. There you go. I am a resource. <laughs> a personal resource right here. But how can you help people who get caught up in that and as a result have become discouraged? Yes. Because it's led nowhere, a lot of time, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. yes. How can you help them? Absolutely. Well, one thing about it is you, again, you have to make sure that you're aligned with somebody who the vision and the mission for your particular project, they are the best subject matter expert. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you mentioned, everybody isn't for everybody, but of course everybody or quite a few people will just take your money and lead you down a rabbit hole. So you have to really, you know, be watchful and be definitely be mindful of that. I would suggest making sure that you know once you find your subject matter expert like if i'm the subject matter expert obviously if there's uh the skill that i'm proficient in i will do the research and do the do the due diligence to make sure that every grant that we apply for that we qualify for you know mm -hmm. as opposed to just wasting time because time is the one you know one resource that you you definitely can't get back <laughs> and it doesn't make sense to just apply just for the sake of, you know, we have three out of maybe, let's say, six things that qualify you for this particular grant or for this, you know, this proposal, knowing that you're not going to get it when you can qualify, when you could be researching, qualifying for another grant or proposal or bid where you qualify six out of six, <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and then you're guaranteed to get the funding for that particular project. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. What are some of the myths that go about, that are surrounding um, grants? I would say the, the very first one is, is that people think that they qualify for everything and you don't. <laughs> it's just like in your, <laughs> personal, in your personal life. If you think about it in your personal life, sure, I can do many things, but a few things I'm okay at, some things I'm good at, other things I'm great at, and other things I'm exceptional at. Mm -hmm. So people have to understand that just because your vision, like for, for me, I will say, so I have a youth program for children ages six to 17. It's called the LEAD program. It's not a nonprofit yet, but I'm leaning towards getting other people involved so that I can qualify it for as a nonprofit youth organization. Okay. But all of that entails doing your due diligence and your research to make sure that you, you know, that you qualify for it. And then when grants become available for that particular project that I'm working on or that particular, um, you know, organization that I'm working for, 
that I can get the grant. You know, I will be awarded the grant. Because again, just because something is, you know, semi aligned with what I'm doing, it does not mean that I will, my company or my organization will totally qualify for it. So you just have to make sure you got to read the fine lines. You have to make sure that whatever is in that particular package, because nine times out of 10, when it gets down to the, the nitty gritty where it talks about different things that you have to have for the government, you want to make sure that you can produce all of those things. You know, I think a lot of people run with things and they're like, oh, well, you know, that's if you get audited. No, you need to run your business. You need to run your organization as if you're going to be audited and just be, you know, upfront and as, <laughs> as honest as possible. So people think that it is a one-stop shop for grants, for proposals, for bids, and it's not. So you have to make sure that, that your organization actually qualifies for it. That will be the first thing that, or the first bullet point tip, success tip that I would give for attempting to qualify for grants. Mm -hmm. okay. And that was a good tip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't waste time. <laughs> yeah, because many people look at something and they'll say, you know, minority um, women owned businesses yeah. and they will jump on it mm -hmm. without doing what you're talking about, doing their due diligence, really going through it. Yeah. You know, because all they see is that title. Thing. Right. <laughs> and yeah. find out, well, what's, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Women owned businesses, that's a huge category. It's a broad category. Absolutely. But where do I fit into it? And do I fit into it? And if I don't, well, let me go find something else. That's right. And there's a lot of opportunities out there. And that's why I don't understand why people just read the subject line, you know, of this, like you said, women owned, minority owned, you know, small business. And then it's like, oh, but that's me. I'm a small business. Well, yes, I'm a small business, but I'm a creative content consultant. So it wouldn't do me any good to apply for a grant for a small business owner that is, a, you know, a flower shop. <laughs> So uh -huh. or whatever, you know, I have to make sure that whatever my business is, the categories, the qualifications, every, just about every qualification um, is there so that I can be, sh be assured that I will be awarded that grant, <laughs> you know, or, or awarded that, that bid. So, yeah. and, even, and even going through the jargon, the, cause I mean, I've, I've seen the, the, the paperwork that the government sends. It's a book. And just getting that alone can be overwhelming, number one, mm -hmm. and scary when in actuality it's really only this much yeah. that you really need to be focused on. That is correct. So, and the and the this much that you need to be focused on is where, where it talks about the things you need for the government. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because I remember I I was running a typing service at one time and I was gonna try to get government work. Oh okay. my god, they sent me a book. Yes. I was so overwhelmed. And during that time there weren't resources like you. That's correct. I, you know, at, at, during that time, computers weren't even widely used. I'm probably right. telling my age, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. But but the, you know, it was like not too many homes had a computer right. mm -hmm. during that time because they were basically for business only. So trying to get into the arena of doing contracts with the federal government was an overwhelming experience. And, you know, information like you're providing was not readily available. Right. Not at all. <laughs> well, and then you have people that will take your money because just like I've shared with you, I'm a writer, but what type of writer are you? Like I've had to turn people away for certain genres that they needed help for because that's not my genre. I'm not the subject matter expert for that. So it is definitely a myth all across the board. I don't care whether, you know, like you have people that can cook Southern food cuisine, Italian cuisine, you know, it doesn't mean that it's going to filter over just because you think you're like, you know, chef with all hats. <laughs> you may be good in particular areas, but that doesn't mean, you know, it's, it's all across the board. So it's the same way with writers. You have procedural writers, you have ghost writers, you have technical writers. I mean, it's like the list is so vast mm -hmm. and you have to make sure that you do your 
you know, do your research before you hire somebody, definitely before you send them any money. I'm one, you know, with my consultant business, I don't charge anything just to have a conversation, you know, because I want to make sure it's a good fit. And I want to make sure that whatever you are contracting me to do, whatever you, you know, whatever you need me to do to help enhance your organization, your life, personally or professionally, I want to make sure that I'm the person, I'm the right person for that particular job, you know, and a lot of people don't do that. They just want the money <laughs> and then you bombs or you don't get it or you spent, you know, quite a bit of, of time and effort for absolutely nothing. Right. And that's important. To, that's important, not only for the customer, the client, but also for you. Because you don't want to be doing something that you're really not going to be able to put your best foot forward. Absolutely. Because that's not your your area of expertise. Right. So I think it's a two-way sword, you mm -hmm. know, that you need to definitely interview the person that you're going to be hiring. And the person doing the work need to be honest and upfront about Absolutely. what their abilities are. Mm -hmm. That's so right. I agree with that 100%. Wow, we could talk about that all night, but I want to touch a little bit on your book. Okay. Yes. yes. Tell us about that. <laughs> okay. So the story in life of an ex-NFL wife is about my trials, my tribulations, but more importantly, my triumphs, because I don't like to focus so much on the stumbling blocks as much as I do the stepping stones, because to me, that's the catalyst for people to understand that if I came through it, if I overcame it, you can too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what I try to, that's what I really try to focus on. But my book, I am just talking about, oh my gosh, like different things that I learned about myself uh, just from revisiting certain areas, certain incidents and scenarios in my childhood that I was carrying over as an adult that was hindering me from being my personal best self and definitely my professional best self. I had no idea. Certain things that I harbored with my mom, what well, with my biological mom and just other things just, you know, just unfolded me. And I can say this because uh, it's another one of my platforms, especially now with the whole um, Madam CJ Walker with her document, you know, document um, documentary that's out with the yeah. cold light versus dark. Oh my gosh, like I uh -huh. was faced with so much. And I'm not trying to say what was me and like I was a victim um, because I, I really wasn't. It was just all mentally. It was all in my inner self mm -hmm. that allowed a lot of things to really suppress me. <laughs> so in the book, I talk about my childhood being light skinned in an in a African American environment, different things that I went through with that, with my mom with my um, ex-husband, with meeting him, with having children young, because I, you know, went down that path to had, oh, I have two adult amazing children, should I say, and uh, I talk about that, I talk about the NFL lifestyle, how I never felt like I really fit, you know, I felt like that odd puzzle piece that even though they were trying to make us into like Wonder Woman, I think I was like Catwoman or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> But I never did. <laughs> and again, this is not a knock because you would be surprised at some of the emails or some of the comments that I get after I've done interviews or said certain things online. This is not a knock against NFL wives. You know, this is solely my disclaimer for me. Like there are just certain things that the wags, the wives and girlfriends, this, you know, um, mold or this cookie cutter that everybody was supposed to look like this, talk like this, dress like this, be like this, you and your family. And it just, it just never fit for me. And now that I've come into my own, I understand why, 100%. <laughs> so I talk about it in the book. I talk about the divorce in the book, different things that I went through. Not a bashing tool with him. It's just certain things that I learned. Like I lost so much time with our children. They were nine and 11 at the time. And I talk about how, as opposed to me and him, you know, pitting against each other for X amount of years and how we just totally neglected the children and their feelings, uh, just different things that they went through because we were fighting, <laughs> fighting over nonsense, over crazy stuff. So I'm very, you know, transparent about the divorce and I'm transparent about going back to work. So that's something 
that when people ask me, well, why is your story so different from any other, you know, NFL wife? Why do you feel like it's, it's so important? Well, first of all, I don't feel like it's more than, I don't feel that it's more important, but it's my story. And I want to talk about it and I want to tell other people just to give them hope. I was a former NFL wife with a pretty padded uh, bank account at the time. I went through a divorce, not, you know, knocking him or anything that I got, didn't got or whatever. I don't, didn't get, I don't even discuss that in detail in the book. What I do discuss is my um, mindset of just being capable and able and going to work. Like I actually went into the corporate world at a pharmaceutical plant that made a medicine for cows and I did shift work for almost 13 years after my NFL lifestyle. <laughs> okay, so I was taking samples, doing, you know, doing shift work and all of that um, after my NFL lifestyle. So I talk about that. I talk about that me at that particular time finding my true riches in life. And all of that was just me getting closer to God, my connection spiritually growing finding, uh, you know, my purpose, finding myself and just really connecting with friends and family more and being more settled in who I was, you know, because I never really had that before. I was like, like the chameleon, which is so crazy because I think at some point we all have all of these different layers and masks on and we don't ever get to be who we want to be. <laughs> and so oh. I just wrote all of that in the book. And I was just like, I'm just putting it out there. People, you know, prayerfully and hopefully it will help people give, you know, give them a, a different perspective of this whole lifestyle that they think is if I had money, my life would turn around. Or if I had her hair, if I had her this, if I had, you know, such and such for these different celebrities and people in positions of power. No, you know, we're all going through the same exact thing. I think it's just certain seasons. Like maybe this season is not, you know, for me to, to struggle financially, maybe I'm doing good emotionally and mentally, but next season, whoo, I may be in the red. <laughs> I may be trying to figure life out for myself. So, you know, I just really, my main message, ladies, is to really help people globally to live vicariously through themselves. Stop looking at magazines, TV, other people, their lives, what you think their lives are like, and trying to live <laughs> through them live through yourself you're 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 awesome you're fabulous <laughs> oh that's awesome I just thank you love for sharing it. that, that oh my beautiful. goodness yes i can wow. applaud that a hundred percent yes yes that was oh. beautiful so how do people get this book okay so um you can go on my website which is www.inotherwordsbystone.com i am on every book outlet known to man barnes and nobles amazon lulu kindle ibooks so it, there, it's a variety of ways they can google angela marshall they can google the story life of an ex nfl wife and those are all uh you know will give you links to uh get directly to, to me and my uh, different products because i have actually three books out and um, i also do speaking engagements uh, i had an opportunity last year to do an empowerment summit at um, the uh, Essence Festival. So that was pretty cool. Kind of one of the, the highlights of, of, my, of my career to be able to tell my truth, my story, and my life. So yeah, that's, that's how they can get in touch with me. Excellent. Excellent. So we got one more topic, to, and that's your organization, okay. your youth organization. Yes. Tell so us the youth Oh, <laughs> so the youth, or the youth organization is for ages 6 to 17, and it's called the LEAD program. And what LEAD is, is an acronym for Listen, Education, Ambition, and Determination. So I go into different uh, schools or youth ministries, and I just kind of empower, encourage, and, uh, you know, entertain the children just a little bit, too, because, you know, you got to kind of meet people where they're at. Mm -hmm. So I talked to them about what it takes to be a good leader. And those are four things that in my walk has helped me to be a good leader. And I also have included an anti-bullying initiative in there because I know firsthand what it feels like to be bullied 
And I must admit, I was also a bully. I was a mean girl of sorts, you know, because when you get pushed around so much, you kind of, you know, you, you feel like that's the only path that you have to take sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny when I'm talking to them about that. And then I disclose, well, you know, Miss Angela used to be a bully too. It wasn't right. And there were certain things that, you know, I had to do to, to find my light <laughs> in that and, and apologize and make those things, uh, make those things right. But that's what the LEAD program is for six to, to um, ages 17, to just help the children, just like I was helped, because God knows I needed it. <laughs> 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 yes, I was, whoo, uh, you talk about a hot mess. I always tell my family members, friends, people that kind of meet me, you know, now where I'm at, I'm like, well, wasn't always this way, that's for sure. All I can say is thank God. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So how do people connect with that? Um, it's the same way. Everything is through my personal website, which is, um, in other words, by stone. They can send me an email. You can call me, my phone number. Like, literally, ladies, because of the story in life of an ex-NFL wife, which normally that's why I'm, I have to be honest, that's why I'm interviewed the most. And, you know, people, that's more of an intrigue for them. Mm-hmm. So because of that, everything else under my umbrella, like being a creative content consultant, and then in other words, by Stone, which is my actual um, business, if you Google any of that, you will have links <laughs> to come directly to me, I guarantee. <laughs> okay. 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 Wow. You have been, I can, I can see growth in you. Mm-hmm. I can actually <laughs> see it, you know, be, you know, and you are just such a, sunshiny person and I like sunshine people. <laughs> you know and to for you to be able to tell your story and be able to uh make a difference in other people's lives is just huge and when you're talking we can feel that you came from somewhere right. who yeah came from somewhere with a whole lot of bags <laughs> <laughs> right but you know the good piece and this is something that I Talk, when I talk to, because I'm also a mentor to um, ladies, to youth girls that are ages 13 to 17. When I talk to them, I tell them, it's okay to have baggage, ladies, but when you drop it off, when you drop that baggage off from the past, don't go back and get it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you have to evolve. You have to grow. And mm-hmm. at some point, if what you're doing is not getting you that right result, then that means you've been carrying those bags, them same bag too long. Mm-hmm. I know that's right. Just carrying Lock them, not the opening bag. them up to see what's in them and discarding, just carrying them along. <laughs> you're right. Dragging them along behind you. Yeah, yep. you're right. <laughs> I like that image. Yeah, I do too. Because so many people in life do that. They carry their baggage with them forever. And when you talk to them, you realize that, wait a minute, they're not even talking about present. <laughs> they're talking about something way back when. That's and right. it's like, okay, after a while, especially if you're moving forward, you don't really know how to talk to them because they're not talking to you in the present they're really talking to you in their past that's right and a lot of people don't recognize that that that's what they're doing and it's a shame because you know life is for living we all make mistakes we all have stuff you know we have stuff but are we going to live in it or are we going to make up our minds at some point okay you know take a look at it and say okay well can't do anything about it now That's that's over with right it's over i can't do anything about it so thank you so much for bringing up so many fabulous topics this evening. It yes. was just a delight meeting you and listening to your your story. And I know that there's much more to it than this. Oh, yeah. You just got the like the icing on the cake. But we appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. Know? And we're gonna have to have you again because we've yeah. got so much you've got so much going on oh, that man. we wanna really get deep with. Yeah, and it's very difficult to do it in such a short period of time. So we're definitely going to have you again because yeah. we really enjoy every minute of you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. And one more time, okay. before we wrap up, how can people connect with you and learn all about the wonderful things you do? 
You can Google Angela Marshall. <laughs> you can Google the story and life of an ex NFL wife. Or you can go to my website, which is www.inotherwordsbystone.com. And I am also, ladies and gentlemen, I am on every social media and I'm active. No, no robotic messages being sent out. It is me <laughs> that is actually okay. responding and interacting. So I'm on every social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, IG, Twitter, all of them. I'm, I'm very, very accessible. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yes, and thank you again. It was it was definitely an honor being on your show. An mm -hmm. honor to have it's a pleasure you. having you. Such an honor. Thank you. Word on the street says there's something new at Just Minding My Business Media. You've heard our podcast, Just Minding My Business Radio, that brings news and views you can use. That airs every Thursday at 6 p.m on iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and Spreaker. Well, now you can watch Just Minding My Business. That's right, Just Minding My Business Media now has a TV presence on Raven International TV Network, broadcast on Roku, Fire, and Apple TV. Your business, through Just Minding My Business Media, has exposure on internet radio, major social media platforms, and now TV through Just Minding My Business dynamic digital marketing platform. Don't listen to the word on the street. Hear it for yourself. Visit jmmb.assistercircle.org to learn how you can take your business, your vision, to the next level. Thank you to the amazing women of a sister circle empowerment network, a sin LLC and our media partners. Let just minding my business media promote your business for information. Visit us at jmmb.assistercircle.org. That's jmmb.assistercircle.org. Voiceovers by RCH VoiceWorks. For when you want to be heard, call 443-620-4115. Thank you for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. We hope you enjoy the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.